Hi, welcome. This is Dr. John Martini. This is one of the most amazing and inspiring shows that you can listen into. If you want to be on the edge of your seats, if you want to open up your heart, if you want to expand your mind, and you want to meet incredible people, stay tuned because you're just about to experience a transformative radio show that will change your life. And you're listening to the Dr. Pat Show is coming up right next. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. Talk radio to thrive by. Powerful, inspiring, and coming to you live, bringing you stories of people like you and me, busting through and living life full out. Get ready to dare to wonder what your life would be like if you knew you could not fail. Hey, everybody, welcome. It's so great to have all of you tune us in and turn us on. Zayla is in the house. Yep. You're going to talk about, look, this is kind of very cool for me. How do you unlock your secret power? How do you heal the earth? How do you do that? How do you do that with one thing? My very special guest today knows a lot about that. But you heard me talk yesterday and now today. And I want to apologize all of you uh, for our late start today. The earth must have been talking back to us and said, hello, we need a break. Turn off the power. Zayla, it's great to have you. Welcome, welcome, welcome again. Yeah, thanks. It's good to be here again Uh, with you, Dr. Pat. Oh, my God. Do you hear my sound is like even acting up now? Well, you know, would you like me to tell you the reason why? Tell me, please. Okay. Well, unbeknownst, because I don't think any of the major media covered it, but we just, this week, this weekend, I mean, Sunday, Monday, uh, endured the third largest solar flare in, in history, recorded history. Yeah. It, knocked, it knocked out a lot of, of power uh, to, to, to radios and to electronics and the like. And so I think that it's had an effect on a lot of people as well. And I wouldn't doubt it that the part of that is, is, is why we're experiencing the absurd weather that we are currently and why you're experiencing uh, power blackouts. But it's, it's all got to do with Mother Nature, I think, because I think our planet, I know our planet is connected to the sun. And it's, it's connected through the, through the rays that hit our Earth. And I, I tell people that, you know, although the sun gives us warmth, are you aware that we feed the information back to the sun? And so when we are destroying the earth, uh, when we're at war, there's a lot of people that are really, really upset with yeah. this COVID dynamic. And, 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 you know, I'm pro-choice on COVID. And the thing I'd say about COVID is, is that it's a catalyst. Right now, it's a catalyst to finding your center. And I think that Mother Nature is also a catalyst. And Mother Nature just doesn't apply to the earth. It applies to the whole system, including the sun. So everything that the sun touches, it feeds the information back to the sun. And so the sun is very aware of what can happen. National yeah. Geographic, I don't know this, if you know this, Dr. Pat, I found this very interesting. And that is National Geographic covered this a few years ago where the sun, the solar flare went right through our orbit We were further in another season, but it went millions of miles beyond our orbit. And it it just showed you the capability of the sun to toast everything when uh, the sun chooses. That's all there is to it. And so because we're all one, we're connected to the sun, believe it or not. We really, really are. And I mean, the sun can reduce the population. It can reduce the discord. It can just toast it. So anyways... That, I think, is a lot to do with electronics, Dr. Pat. I agree. And, you know, by the way, I thank you for mentioning the solar flare. I think it happened on the 16th, and I can't remember when. But the bottom line is, if you look at the video of it, it's crazy. I mean, there are solar flares, and then there are solar flares. And when we're talking about, it's so interesting the way you presented that, Zayla, because a solar flare, a war over there, the poor, you know, the Ukrainians fighting for their lives. We did, we have been doing some interviews with them, powerful resilience. And the fact 
that there is a conversation, right? Solar flares, right? A lot of radiation. Let's just let's just put this together for a moment, if we could, because you're right on. Solar flare, the talk of nuclear missiles. The sun reminds us how how really tiny we are, and yet we think we're so much bigger, don't we? I mean, it's, it's just amazing. It is just amazing. We're we're here as a privilege to live on planet Earth. And I mean, ironically, today is Earth Day. This is supposed to be a sacred day. Yes. And I believe I believe the sacred day is going to gain momentum so that there's more Earth Days before the Earth Day and after the Earth Day, because you know why? It has to be. So, I mean, what's the one thing I ask people? Give me one thing that can change the whole texture of the planet. Most people, they just go, not one thing. I say, yeah, you know, there is one thing. And I usually give them a, a guess or two. And I say, you know, think about these one things that change the planet forever. Here we go. One thing. Here we go. Edison, Bell, Marconi, the automobile, Kitty Hawk, the internet. Now think deeply about how each of these one things changed our world, Dr. Pat, as we knew it, and what our lives would be like without one of them, never mind all of them. I mean, this is stunning when you understand that. And yeah. so today, we have another opportunity of this magnitude, of each one of those in that magnitude, to start another game changer for the world. So what is this one thing, I say to people? What? What is this one thing that is the ability to transform war into the through the power of human collaboration? What is this one thing that can bring our planet back from the ecological brink and into balance? What's this one thing that has the absolute power to control corporations and bring them back from the impunity of which they've enjoyed in terms of polluting the planet without conscience? It's called what? greed. Here's the one It's called thing. greed. <laughs> no, here's the one. I'm talking about the remedy, not the problem. Yeah, there we go. Okay. What's the one thing? I'll tell you. Integrity. Well, a lot of people would say, that's a stretch, Zayla. Come on, integrity doing all this and saving the planet too. And I go, well, yeah, let me tell you about the golden thread that weaves personal integrity and the planet's health together. Because integrity means different things to different people. But if we start with the two definitions by Google, Dr. Pat, the first is the quality of being honest, having strong moral principles. But the second, this is big. The second in particular, the state of being whole and undivided. Now, this means oneness. Now, integrity is about transparency, balance, harmony. Integrity is about the golden rule. Integrity is about what you do when no one's looking. Integrity means you have no ulterior motive. And integrity is what enhances life because integrity is sanity. And things just fall apart without integrity, Dr. Pat. Look at the, your car fender. Though that, that material starts to break apart, the integrity is gone and the fender rust. Same thing with a bridge, Dr. Pat. Integrity is gone, it starts to flake. So in, in order to make this planetary game changer happen here on Earth, it's going to have to start with each of us having our own personal integrity in order. Because if we're out of integrity, we're out of integrity with our spirit. In order to get in tune with Mother Nature, you have to get in, you got to have to get in, in vertical here. You got to get in integrity with your spirit. And spirit means one with nature. So they're tied. Nature, spirit, synonymous. So remember the state of being whole and undivided? I mean, if we're disconnected with spirit, Dr. Pat, we don't see ourselves as being one with nature or the planet. Mm. And that's because our primary focus is on being connected to the illusion asset, worth, net worth, life dynamics, lifestyle, image, money, and the yeah. making and making of more money. And so we're at that point now, where unless we really come up for air, we're not going to have any place to stand. Yeah. The next generation who's 18 now, based on scientific relations or, or research i should say that age group at our current rate of descent on the planet will not mature to their regular life cycle 
it won't happen. And that's stunning information. Yeah. And you know, what's so interesting about this is that when we're talking about it, not many people are listening. And that's, to me, that's the barrier we have to break through. And it's not that we're not talking about it. There aren't people talking about it. It's when you weigh the consequences of, am I going to get as much money as I possibly can? And if I have to save the planet at the expense of that, I'm not going to do it. Now, I'm simplifying it, but that's what it boils down to. Unless there is going to be leadership, because I really do believe you've got to have leadership. I, we can't all be Greta Thunberg. I wish we were. But we need to be able to look at this in a way where people take this seriously because, say lot, this is serious. Well, it's beyond serious. Yeah. I mean, you think of our lives as we know it, our kids' lives, our grandkids' lives, you know, and be, I think that everybody should have posted, you know, the, the, the Indian Cree a, a cre uh, creation. And they, 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 they say that only when the last uh, tree has been cut down, only after the last river has been poisoned, only after the last fish has been caught, then, only then yeah. will humanity find that money can't be eaten. Yeah. That says it all. Yeah. And you know what else says it all? We can't do this planetary thing one person at a time. It's got to be a collective. It's got to be a collective. And, and I'll say this, because this one usually makes people think when I say this. And that is, look, everybody's in that, what I call the divine squeeze right now. You're supposed to get connected spiritually. But the divine squeeze comes from a deterioration of financial, for the average person, relationships, and health. And most people, they want to get this, these three optimized. Then I can give back to Mother Nature. And I'm going, really? News flashed. It'll never be optimized. Why don't you just start planning on giving something to Mother Nature while these are developing? And chances are, if you give, then maybe these, the ceilings that are on these big three will rise and more abundance will come to you. And what happens if all of us all over the planet say, you know what, this is a good idea. We all got to do this. Let's all chip in, you know, maybe 20 minutes a day and let's do something on a project, whether that's cleaning up in our community, whether that's going beyond that, but let's start giving back before the big three is in perfect shape. That should hit a lot of people right in the heart because if we don't do this soon, here, this, this is a line that I love. We may not have a place to stand. Yeah. And, you know, I have to tell you, this may sound a little bit. I'm one of the most optimistic people you'll find. And every once in a while in my life, I will enter a minute of shock. Now, I know what it's like to live at a place. And I shared this story yesterday where growing up in my 20s, I'm walking along the Jersey Shore. I, I, I don't think people even remember how polluted the Hudson was. But walking along the Jersey Shore and I step on a hypodermic needle. Ooh. See, that was my wake up call about the earth and really what we were doing because that led me on a journey, right? You have to find out what did you step on you pick it up, you take it to your doctor. I mean, it takes you down a pathway, but that's how polluted that area was. And it, and it had to get so bad that regular people walking on the beach, that would happen for people to pay attention. But even with that, I, I was I, I woke up the other day and I did a show on Earth Day yesterday and today, of course, we're talking about it. I am still in shock that in this day and age, right? And, and really, this talks to our point about integrity. Now, I studied integrity as part of my doctoral research. It was 10 years of research because nobody had defined integrity. 
at the time. There were no books on it. And it was one of the most used words we have in vision statements and mission statements. It's not so much anymore. They had to take it out because it was just a lie. But one of the things I woke up the other day and I realized it's very hard for me to sit in a bubble when people are getting killed in another country for no reason whatsoever. And I just thought to myself a minute, see, if we're not going to, if we're going to continue to be silent. Now, the people of the Ukraine have not been. They've been on television. They've been on radio. There are donations. You can hardly go anywhere to donate. They are still not winning that war. And, you know, my spiritual coach says, you know, Pat, sometimes that's just the way that it is. That's just the law of the universe for whatever the dynamic is. And then I say, yeah, but we don't. I mean, the sounds of silence are deafening to me. That's what's happening on the earth. The sounds of silence are deafening. And the reason I say that, Zayla, is because you're right about integrity. I mean, honestly, if you talk to any of my data systems people, the people in computer stuff, that is one of their favorite words. Because if their data and their data systems do not are not built on a format of high integrity, what do you think they call that? There's one word they call it. My my tech people, I worked at Bell Labs, and I will tell you, the one word I learned that is the opposite of integrity is corruption. See, that's the way they talk about data, right? It's well, fascinating that you're bringing this up. Well, nature has given us callings, you know, Dr. Pat, through many confirmations and warnings that we're out of integrity. Yeah. We're out of integrity, oneness and balance. She's giving us these callings through yep. excess, excess rain, excess wind, excess snow, excess cold, excess heat. Think about it. How else could she tell us that she's in pain and maxed out? This is this is not about the crazy weather. This is about the crazy people. This is about the crazy people. All right. That's my people, point. Yeah, people just don't get it. I mean, she's trying to get our attention and she's crying out for our assistance. Would we ignore Mother Earth if she was crying out for our help if it was our personal mother? Whoa. We would say, stop. I, I need to do something here. Mom called. She's in trouble. I need to go over there. And that's what's happening right now. So you look at the excessive and increasing inland flooding around the world. And you know what? I may be crazy about this, but as these poles shrink, I think specifically the North Pole that, and the South Pole too, there's a, you know icebergs breaking away. I think it goes up into the atmosphere, and I think it just holds it up there till there's a tap that's got to be released inland. And it's like, okay, you guys aren't getting it from increasing water levels at the shoreline. You know what? How about if I just pour excess? So I'll open exactly. A tap here. I'll open a tap here. And I mean, this is my own just knowing. It's not that I've read anything in science because, you know, the, the sea levels are rising. The global temperatures are rising. There's warming oceans. There's declining Arctic sea ice. There's glacial retreats. There's ocean acidification. On that note, everyone on the planet should watch the movie. Write this down. C-S-E-A, Spiracy. C-Spiracy. Watch this movie. It, it will hold you, you will sit there afterwards and you'll just put your head in your hands and you'll go, I had no idea, I, honest to God. The other thing that I would suggest is, is watch, jump on the internet, tap in uh, the story of stuff. And it's going to give you a great presentation about really how badly we've turned into a consumer and we got to buy everything. We throw things away, not thinking. How long will it take Mother Earth to dispose of this for decay? I need to fix this rather than throw it away. Watch the series. It starts with the story of stuff, but there's other ones in succession that you can watch. Mm -hmm. Dr. Pat, I mean, you will, you will be on the same campaign that I am. All of our programs, your program, my program, you know, from my center, the center at CFT, I'm teaching all my students 
we need to all be spreading the word about doing something for Mother Nature. Absolutely. In addition, in addition to all of what our preferred campaigns are to wake up in, in consciousness, this needs to be the first because we won't have a place for our children or our grandchildren. They're going to have the biggest load unless we come up with something that means that we're going to take care and stop polluting. If you stop polluting, it means you stop buying. Stop buying anything. And if more planets, people do that on the planet, you know what will happen is? It may not be too late, but I think that the, I think Mother Nature is going to have to reduce the load of 8 billion of us on the planet at the rate that we're currently living. It doesn't have to be this way, Dr. Pat. But I mean, you take a look at the record snowfall uh, a while oh. ago in Cap Capricorn, Italy. Get this. Eight I know. Five feet in 24 hours. You can't get out of your garage. You can't get out of your house. What are going to? What are the snowplow is going to do? What are the snowplows going to do, Doctor? Where are the cars go around? You know, I mean, wow, eight point five feet. Look, Zayla, I live in the Pacific Northwest, so if this is not eye opening, right? We, I live in a place. I moved here in 1992, went to school in California, but commuted back and forth. This is a place that when they built homes, they did not put in air conditioning. We have hotels that do not have air conditioning. So just, just, just let's just capture this for a minute. Multi-million dollar hotel structures in the Pacific Northwest that don't have air conditioning. Why? We've never needed it. Last summer, People were scorched here the summer before. Right now, more people are installing air conditioning in a place that never had a need for it. Now, why? Why are we different? Because kind of like the desert, you can go up to 90 degrees here and drop down to 50 at night, right? You see, no, that's not the case anymore. And don't think for one minute we're not aware of it. When we come back, let's talk about this because here's what here's the thing that's mind-boggling for me. I've been around a while. I know what it was like to watch an atrocity in a war and people just head to the streets about it. I know what it was like to have something on your heart that just didn't sit right and head to the streets, right? Right. Right now, nada. When we come back, I want to talk with you about have we given hope, up hope, on what we perceive to be the leadership systems that we're supposed to be looking out for us. Let's take a short break, Zayla. When we come back, we'll talk about that, let people know how they find out about you. But have we sort of walked away thinking, I can't stop that war over there because nobody else is really trying to stop it. I can't do climate control change. I can't be Greta because nobody else. Is that really gonna, is that our story? Let's take a short break. We'll be right back, everybody. <laughs> Benny, thank you. I love that song. So yeah, much. I love it. I love that song. Uh, Zayla, thank you for today. Would you let folks know, I know we're talking about a lot, but you're also doing a lot. How do people find out about what you are doing and how can they connect with you? Oh, thank you for that overture. You know, uh, you can find me, Zayla, that's said A L A H Zayla. Now that's my spiritual name, that's my teacher name. Uh, you can find me at the CFT which actually long form stands for the the uh, Center for Transformation. So the CFT.ca, go to the website. You could probably spend a couple of hours there with all the interviews that I'm doing. The center's been around for a little more than 20 years. I'm the best kept secret in North America. It's only the last six, eight months that I let my picture be known, Dr. Pat, out there on the website. Up till now, I've just been very, very humble. Yeah. But it's time now that more of us true teachers, what I call TTs, come out. And we all need to start standing up now because silence is consent in, in, in a lot of these things that's going on right now. And it's time for us to stand up because, you know, there's, there's one island of plastic swirling around on the ocean that's as large as Texas. 
Can you imagine sailing through that in a sailboat? Hundreds of miles of plastic. And you know, there's actually five plastic islands on the planet's oceans right now, Dr. Pat. And yeah, so I do. I know who, it. Who dumped all this plastic in the oceans? Proof that integrity is what you do when no one's looking. That's what that proves. And I mean, speaking of the oceans, you know, it wasn't that long ago where there's this dumping of 280 tons of nuclear waste from the Fukushima water plant in, in Japan, a nuclear plant. Everyone knows how long radiation lasts for. And they were dumping it in the ocean. And yeah. that, that circulates all over the place. So we need to understand that we drive these automobiles knowing that they produce emissions which thin that ozone, which means it affects the DNA of every living thing on the planet. So, you know, I think the sun has given us a warning bow shot. The other alternative for the sun, and scientists know this, is to send forth an electromagnetic pulse. You know what happens is all electricity shut down. Exactly. And once you shut down the transformers, which produce the electricity, then you know what? It takes forever to build a transformer without electricity. So yeah. then, you know what you have? You can't get to the ATM. That's right. You cannot get to the gas pump. You may not be able to run your vehicle for even for what's in it. So you know what? Then you have to live very consciously because we have to rebuild society. And I think it would trigger anarchy. I do. There's no question about it. First of all, it is the core of chaos. And the reason I say that is because we have become so dependent on our lifestyle. Yeah. Now, there are some countries that are not, they don't, they're not going to care. They, they know what it's like to live from the earth. They know what it's like to share in their community. They know what it's like to share with their families. And you fill in the blank. They know what it's like. But I was late for the show because I thought somebody outside hit a transformer. I mean, we literally had like a mini blackout here. And, you know, what's so fascinating about that for me is I realized the power was out. I also realized that there was nothing I was going to be able to do. It came back on for a nanosecond. And then I, I tried to get on the show and then it went out again. Uh. Right. And. Now, why? Well, let's talk about solar flares because we started to talk about that. Okay, so the, the, the sun has a flare on August 9th. The impact of that may take a while to get to Earth. And if you go online and you, and you just Google solar flare, right? If you just go online, what you're going to find will shock you. See, you think we're talking like one thing, right? You think we're talking about like what? No, look at the history of this, right? Massive solar storm to hit her April 14th. So that was April 14th, everybody, right? Likely to cause outages, right? When you look at the imagery of this and the fact that we have deteriorated, right? Zayla, deteriorated around our planet, the protection Yes. We're on borrowed time here. There's no, there's no question. You know, I, I teach this, and this is a stunning, stunning statement. And it's this. Mother Nature will preserve those who are in tune with it. So if you take the tribal people from, from the originals to the Hopi to the Amazon tribes people, you know what? They don't care if the electricity goes out, Dr. Pat. They don't care if the stock market goes to 100 points. It won't affect them at all. And the previous five root races, Dr. Pat, that we had, somebody had to live to seed the next root race. Somebody had to. What if I told you that the people that were in tune with nature, they were protected. They were protected. So it's tough for you to be in tune with nature if you're not in tune with your divine self. And that's what I teach. So in the event that the electricity goes out, one thing, I'll tell you what, humanity will cave. Because at that point, you know what matters? What matters is how can I survive? And that means how can I create? Who knows how to create? 
because we all create either consciously or unconsciously. The idea is to be able to create consciously. Well, if you've got nothing else to do, then you know what? We at the CFT teach the principles of creation through breath, how to spin the energy around your body properly, because could it be that there's three phases in life? Follow me here. First phase is when you're growing up. So from zero to 18, Dr. Pat, the body's growing up, but not going old. Second phase is where you enter duality. And you know what? Your, your life looks like a, a, a seismic. You're going up and down from positive to negative on business deals, disappointments, money, uh, dramas. You're doing this, emotions. And finally, if you're lucky to come to the end of phase two and enter phase three while you're still in the body, phase three is the alone phase, which stands for all one. This is what we teach at the CFD. Once you get to the alone phase, you want more time alone. You want more time for meditation. You want more time to go within. Because if you don't go within, you will go without. So if you practice what we teach you at the CFT, there's a place that you can go to in your beingness where your body spins the energy like it did spin in your first phase. This triggers a fertile imagination. Because when you're a kid, you could just think about something and it would come to me a lot easier. And I remember thinking, these adults are really stupid. They, they've lost this. They have just lost it. And so next thing you know, I'm one of those who lost it. But that's that's the humbling process. Mm -hmm. So who who can teach you? Uh, well, we've got spiritual classes from, from basic spirituality right through to quantum physics. It'll take me seven years to teach you. But we've got material already recorded, Dr. Pat, to take classes one week at a time, an hour at a time for the next 10 years, already in the bag, already. Yeah. Yeah, and there's no place on the internet that you could get this, but you should be able to put this to the top of your priority list because of the thin ice that we're on with Mother Nature. Yeah, I, I want to, you know, let's make sure people have your website again. Let's do that because you and I are on the same path in that, you know, it's time for us to really come out more. It's time yes. for us to speak out more. It's time for us to share our strength and our experiences and our hope right? But, you know, let's, let's folks know how they can do that and find out more about you. Because okay. we're, we need to talk about the solar flare that happened. Okay. It was almost a class X flare. Yes. And we'll talk yes. about that. But how do they find out more about you? Okay, just just tap into the computer, the cft.ca. And you'll be able to read a lot about mm -hmm. me. You can get honestly, I think there's a 100 testimonials there of people that have come and gone and i tell people when they come to the center look the teaching is it's the, it's the teaching it's not my teaching and it's i'm just a copper wire you know i live it as best i can i didn't create it didn't invent it i'm just a teacher and if you're looking for somebody that you want to follow and drink the kool-aid i'm not your guy but if you're looking to get in touch with spirit your heart and become independent then i say to you look i don't want to i don't want to feed you a fish a day i'll teach you how to fish <laughs> and that's yes. what I want to do. And, exactly. and so that's a good fit. Great. But if you're looking for somebody to drink the Kool-Aid with, I'm not your guy. And I mean, I say the teaching is open to anybody, but it's it's not for everyone. It's not. Yeah. So I say it's not a matter of if something big is going to happen in Mother Nature. It's a matter of when. Yeah. And, and you know, we're already seeing it. I want to get back to what we talked to start to talk about when you opened the show with. And I got a couple of messages from people. They want us to talk more about it. So here's what happened. For those of you that may not know, um, on April 21st, that was like a couple of days yesterday, right? There was a giant eruption from the sun. And the language that's being used is might have sent solar storm hurtling towards Earth. Now, what does that mean for us? Well, first of all, if you read up about this, it is a powerful, powerful one. It, it's a flare that burst out of a region of the sun they call uh, 2993. I think that's what they call it right? 2993. And that part of the sun is facing the earth. So just so you know why we're talking about it. And they classified it as an uh, M96. 
powerful, not quite an X class, but just fell short of it. Yes. So what does that mean? So here's what it means. It's so significant that as of today, right, as of today, the National Oceanic and Atmosphere of Administrative Space Weather Prediction Center, it's like a big title, they're still working to determine, this is their language, the likelihood of Earth impact. I think what they're really trying to say, the magnitude of Earth impact, because they are what you were saying before, this is the deal with solar flares. They knock out satellites. Th this, is, this is what we're talking about, yes. right? Yes. They're not just like, oh, the sun is having a... No, it is a geomagnetic storm. It has a major disturbance on the Earth's magnetic field. Yes. And when that happens, right, it causes a ripple effect. That's what you opened the show with earlier, Zahar, right? Yes, well, it has, actually has a cascading effect. Yeah, not just ripple, but cascading. Yeah, and so like throughout, you know, everybody listen to this because once you hear this one thing, it'll change your reality. Throughout history, the economy and the ecology have always been on a teeter totter. Always, politicians say we can't afford to go fast at, at taking preventative measures. I would say, newsflash: the ecology has always won in the end. Yeah, always. Yeah. No. And we're at the point now where we can't afford. But, you know, in terms of cleaning up the planet, no one person could do it. This is a forced collective effort to get us to shoot right up the center together because no one person can do this. We all have to chip in. So it forces us to be one mind on this for the life of us, for the life of us, Dr. Pat. And more and more people have to get passionate about this and start really creating a contribution before their life is optimized in, which is my last book, The Big Three, optimized in financial, relationships, and health. You will never be optimized in this. Never. There's always going to be more. So why don't we all chip in? And why don't we all start putting the planet at, on our priority list for a bit every day? That's what I would recommend. Because remember, the ecology always wins in the end. Mother Nature will do a correction here of mon monumental proportions. Monumental. I had a friend, I had a friend that said something to me, and I don't know if it's true, so probably have to fact check this, but he's a data person. And he said to me, you know, Pat, if all, all of us that are on social media, if we would cut our social media presence every day by 20% and put that effort towards loving Mother Earth and reversing climate change, we would be able to solve this within a five-year period. Wow. And now he's a data, I didn't ask him the data. I was just, I had to really think about that. But he's right. You know, we have an addiction and it is clear to me it's addiction. I, I work with young people and adults in addiction. And the hardest addiction to break is, and people are going to think, okay, it's the internet and social media. No, it's cell phones. When people cannot respect either an organization, your parents at dinner, uh, friends or colleagues, your children, enough to put your damn cell phone away. That is the definition of addiction. When you are powerless, <laughs> yeah. when you are powerless over something, that's an addiction. And that's what my friend was saying, yes. you know, and he didn't say that you shouldn't stop using it. Yeah. But he said, if you took 20% of uh, the 20% of whatever you're doing, like on your phone and your social media, and maybe you decided to follow Greta, maybe you decided to become part of an organization, maybe you decided to clean up the, the plastic on your own beachfronts or forests or whatever yes. that is. He said five years. I said, you know what? When you get some data, come on my show. Let's talk about that. He says, I have the data, but nobody believes me. 
<laughs> well, we all need to start shifting, Pat. We all definitely need to start shifting our priorities in life from just our lifestyle yeah. to the health of the planet. Yeah. We all need to create a tsunami here yeah. collectively. It has to gain momentum. And yeah. if we don't, Pat, we need to, uh, to help Mother Nature catch her breath. We need to help her inhale, for God's sake, about this. Because I'm passionate about life. I'm passionate about this planet. I'm passionate about integrity. I this am too. What, this I is, am this too. Is, this is a, how, you know, this is, has to be. This is how I teach. And so this is a subject that usually for decades prefers to pass by in silence for some reason. Well, you know what? We can't afford that anymore. Yeah. No more, no more being ostriches. No more. It's fascinating to me because, you know, we I don't take addiction lightly. And the reason I don't take it lightly is because I know the bowels of addiction. And when addiction really will pull you so far away from really looking at those things that truly might affect you. And you cannot not do it. I mean, I work with parents and, and children alike that cannot sleep at night without their cell phone by their head. Wow. That's what it is. I have a friend that owns a company that um, you walk in his door and your cell phone goes in a bucket. And I ask him why. He said, what would happen if peace were to break out in your brain? And I looked at him and I said, he said, think about why we're not thinking about and leaning in to the kind of change path that you talk about on your show, because we're filling every other moment we have. Yeah. Yeah. We're trying to connect with someone or something to make ourselves feel better. And, you know, I don't know if all of that's true. I just know that we have to put something down in order for us to pick something up to create the kind yeah. of change you started with today. Do you, do you know what I mean? Say well, we, yeah, of course I do. We can't just stand by and watch the mother of all living things deteriorate while she's in our care, while she's in our trust, while we are here on the planet. So the sad part about that is I'm sure that what we're talking about is the tip of the iceberg <laughs> of what Mother Nature has to deal with on a planetary basis. I don't think we could be on fire enough. I mean, honestly, because we could light our hair on fire and stand in front of a big public building and well, for this cause, and people would say, meh. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, I I think anything less than that. I mean, here is the sad part. I've been following Greta Thunberg since she was really young. And in the past couple of years, her family has had death threats. She's had death threats. Uh. Right. And I want to go back to the way you started this show. We need to get back to incorporating respect and integrity into our lives every day. To threaten your, somebody else's family and somebody else's life because they have a voice to save the planet is unconscionable to me. It is. You know, let me add that to something that just complements that. We all must remember the best things in life aren't things. <laughs> Integrity needs to be, uh, needs to matter more than things right now, especially personal net worth, corporate profits, lifestyle, image, and money. You know, money. <laughs> we need to stop, just stop, because if not, we're going to kill the very thing that sustains us. And you know what? There's no return from this. Yeah. Now, I believe that before we kill the planet, I think the sun will step in. And I think it'll be the end of this six root race. I do. I'll see you on the other half of the sky. And I love say, it. <laughs> really? And I'll say, you know what? You and I did all we could. We're out there holding the flags and 
trying to get leverage to the masses and saying, look, all of this, the gate is closing. You better learn how to be connected spiritually and you better learn how to create. You better learn how to trigger what we call, true teachers talk, call it the prima materia, which is the fertile part of the imagination. Mm. Where you get imagination to fruition time shortening, but you can only get that with integrity, love, peace, focus, and all the rest of the components that we teach you about at our center. Mm. And we've got the depth to do so. So yeah. I mean, the current world is a world of excess. Do more, have more. And this has to pause for a while. I love it. Zayla, thank you so much. Thank you, Benny. Thank you, everybody out there. Remember what we're talking about. Just do one thing today. Do one thing. You know, and, and that may be to stop doing one thing, right? Stop reaching for that bottle of water, perhaps. Just stop it. Try it for a week. See if you'll be able to live your life anyway. Thank you all. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.